www.cars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. My name is Willem and this is my 1979 Golf 1. So let me show you the front, the VR6 is in the, in the front of the car, VR6 turbo, and here at the back, I've got the petrol tank. And a backup engine. Welcome to City Golf Live. <laughs> but you can feel it's just spinning, you know. Since I was young, I liked the, the idea of working with your hands and um, working on cars. I just loved engines and the sound of the... Yeah, I've got a printing shop there in uh, Morleta Park um, called Business Point. And um, yeah, after hours, I like to, to get into my garage and fix stuff and build stuff. And it keeps me busy. I bought the, the, the golfer from a tiny just up here in the, in the street um, for five grand in 2006 and um, yeah, me and a friend bought it together. We wanted to, to fix the car and sell it. And um, I just started my, my, my business back then. And then eventually it turned out that this little golfie was my only means of transport. And um, I had to buy him out, that two, two and a half thousand rand, I bought him out. Um, and then I drove the car, it had a little 1100 uh, with a four speed gearbox. Um, I drove the car for a long time like that and um, yeah, when the business was a little bit better um, I fitted a 1.8 engine into it and um, after that I sold the car to my nephew. Uh, he had a car for a while and then he wanted uh, a VR6 in it and um, I built the VR6 in it and he had a car for a while and then he said no, you want to sell the car? And um, I said, no, I, I have to buy it back. And that's a lot of sentimental value. And then the car was standing in the garage for a long time until I saw videos from uh, Robbie Ferroli with his twin engine Golf. And I thought maybe I should fit another VR6 in it. Um, so yeah, we bought the, I think we bought it from Japan or two back then, that VR6. And um, it was actually quite straightforward to swap it. Um, I built the engine mountings myself. Uh, we've, we had the VR6 gearbox obviously with it um, and some polo, polo shift linkages and um, yeah it was a straightforward with Dictator and um, yeah it was working fine, a little bit heavy in the front but a straight easy swap and reliable as well. Yeah, obviously I started with it with a, with a cutting out the back part and, and fitting the other engine with, with a gearbox and everything. And I drove it like that with the two VR6s, uh, normally aspirated, for a while. And um, then uh, I took it to Tolton once. And yeah, I just needed that little bit of power at the end of the quarter mile. And um, I thought maybe, maybe I should add turbos to both of them. When you start, well, you have to start somewhere. So I just, the one, I, the one day I reversed it in here and um, I took the interior out and I just started cutting it. And once you start cutting, you know you have to finish it. Then you will figure it out, because there's no, no one can um, tell you what to do. Um, so when I only want to use one engine, I disconnect um, just the linkages of, um, of the other engine. So that means that that gearbox stays in neutral. And also I don't start that engine. Then I can use the front one, however I want. Otherwise it will be dragging that engine. I, I struggled with the, with the clutches a lot because um, you have to, one pedal, have to push, push the two, two clutches. And um, I actually found uh, Robbie Faroli himself in, in um, I think he's in Cape Town, I think. I found him and um, I asked him and he said, now he fitted a, a Woolwood pedal or Tolton pedal box. And um, I imported one of those and um, yeah, that was it. 
That was it. That was the, the biggest, the biggest things to make the gears work. The clutch lever is is um, it's really heavy. Of course, you are pushing two two uh, pressure plates at once, and um, yeah, you have to have a, a big left leg. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's two engines, uh, two gearboxes. So once you select the front engine, you have to select first at the back engine. Um, uh, currently, the, the front engine clutch takes a bit uh, uh, earlier than the back one, um, just so there's not, not that much um, effort at the, of the back engine, you know, because the, when, you, when you launch it, then if there's too much at the back, it will, the back, the back end will get out. I'm using the standard gearboxes, standard VR6 gearboxes with standard clutches. I think the biggest challenge was, uh, was um, the gear linkages to make that work. Um, that was really difficult. Um, but the rest of the stuff was actually quite easy. To dyno it was, was easy. Put it on the dyno, did the front one and then did the back one and then they did it together. It's actually just another Golf. Actually, I used at the back, I used the subframe from a Golf 2. And I welded that to the back of the car. And then that makes it very simple to fit the other engine. And it's actually easier to work at the on the back engine than in the front. There's a lot of space, a lot of space at the back. Yeah. As I, there's no prop shaft. Uh, the front engine works the, the front wheels and the back engine the back wheels totally independent from each other. Yeah, it's actually it's actually not that bad. Doesn't doesn't like going too slow because at idling they are battling each other. Um, but yeah it's actually quite easy. So unfortunately the rain is stopping us a little bit because there's no traction control now. These are semi-slicks. So I don't think I should push it <laughs> in, in the wet. Um, no, the, the, the engines are stock standard. Um, I only lowered the compression with a spacer. Um, I think it's a three millimeter spacer. And um, that's it, stock standard pistons. Everything else is standard. The cylinder heads, everything is standard. And um, it's been like that since 2018. T3, T4 turbos, um, some of those cheap Chinese one, because when you have to buy one, you have to buy two. I have to buy two. And um, yeah, I think the, the power uh, back then on MRD's dyno was around 400 kilowatt and about 800 Newton meters, which is more than enough for the little car. I can actually pull away in, in fourth gear. Um, so the brakes are, um, in the front is just a little bit bigger um, uh, discs um, with, with standard uh, City Golf calipers. Um, obviously they're ventilated. At the back I used um, discs and, and calipers from a Golf 5. Uh, I think it's a, a GTI. And um, suspension wise it's standard. There's uh, the normal Golf 1 control arms. Um, the shocks obviously in, in the back, in the front is, is both from a Golf 1, um, just with VR6 lowering uh, springs. Um, you know, inside I, I tried to, to um, heat everything. Um, so it's got two, two um, temperature gauges and two boost gauges. Um, just the vital stuff and two, two um, tachometers so that I can see what's going on. So I've got one key, I switch it on and then I've got two start buttons. Um, to start them separately because if you want to do it both on one starter button it's a little bit too much on the battery and the, you know, like I said previously the front engine the clutch takes first so you, will, you will hear when I pull away the, the one engine is uh, and the other one and then they catch up because when you when you launch it and they both take exactly the same time the back end can go out so the, the front one is already pulling it straight you know well, luckily with um, Dictator, it's, it's very easy. Um, it's very easy to, to set it up. So I just made it start and I actually, because I had the front engine running already on Dictator, I just copied that map onto the back one 
and I made it to MRD and Wimian tuned the car on, on his four-wheel drive dyno. Normally they think there's only an engine at the back because you can actually see through the through the window. Um, so they, they normally think it's only a rear wheel drive, um, but they are really surprised when you show them the one in the front as well. It gets really hot inside. Um, there is fans, but it doesn't help. It, it gets really hot inside. Normally I drive with the windows down. Okay. Um, and obviously it sounds, it's a VR6, and you've got the typical Vura sound. And with the turbos, it just makes it uh, that much better. I think that's the one of the best things about the car is the sound of two VR6 turbo engines. And it's, it's not so much noise at the back. It's actually quite um, a whole quiet. And normally when I take it to shows, I um, use only the front engine. But then it's actually fine, you know, then it doesn't bother at all. The whole back part, I, I build out of steel. Um, mainly because when something happens, I don't want that engine at the back near me. Um, and also you've got the petrol tank there at the back. Um, so yeah, it keeps everything nice and, and as, as safe as I can get it, yeah. It's smooth. We're looking for the push <laughs> in the rain. But you can feel when I... It goes immediately when you put your foot down, it, it just goes. In every gear, doesn't matter what gear you're in, pulls in every gear. Ladies and gentlemen, a momentous occasion in the history of cars.coza. We are rolling out a completely new smartphone app. You'll find it in the Android App Store, the Apple App Store, and the Huawei App Gallery. So next time your app updates, you should see a completely new interface. We'd love to know what you think about it, so let us know how the app has been in the comments below. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. Cars.coza.